The Maruti Suzuki Gypsy has been my favorite car ever since I can remember. And that's with good reason. For the Gypsy has been serving the Indian Army's front lines for well over 30 years. But now there seems to be a new contender. Well, the Indian Army is trying out this new model, Forces Gurkha Extreme. And to ensure that the Gurkha is up to the task at hand, Force has taken its standard model and taken it up several notches. So this new extreme model gets a new engine, a new transmission, a new transfer case, new axles, new suspension, a new ECU. You get the picture. In fact, the only thing that this extreme model shares with the Explorer is the body shell. So will this new Force Gurkha Extreme be able to serve as well as the rugged, dependable and versatile Maruti Suzuki Gypsy? Well, that's only something that the Indian Army's research will be able to tell us. Until then, I'm going to get behind the wheel of this Force Gurkha Extreme and find out if it's the real deal. In this extreme format, the Gurkha gets a lot of heavy-duty hardware to ensure that it can deal with the harshest and most demanding terrains and conditions on a continuous basis. And it would have to if it were to serve the Indian Army in what includes some of the most challenging terrain and weather conditions in the world. So this purpose-built Gurkha Extreme gets a couple of unique mechanical components that are unseen on any other production vehicle in India. These include its spring over axle configuration that sees the new coil spring suspension mounted over the Dana 44 rigid axles. Then there is that factory fitted snorkel, which again is a USB for the Gurkha Extreme in India. And it is also the only vehicle in India to come with front and rear locking differentials, this side of the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. But then again, the G-Wagon is an import after all, and a very expensive one at that. Speaking of the G-Wagon, the overall silhouette of the Gurkha undoubtedly resembles that of the very first G-Wagon from 1979. Now this isn't really a coincidence as the Gurkha Extreme features core Mercedes-Benz hardware in the form of its engine and gearbox, while the transfer case is sourced from Borg Warner. Now the moment you start this 2.1 litre Mercedes-Benz turbo diesel engine, its refined nature is evident throughout its power band and the gearbox isn't too notchy either. As for the transfer case, that operates in a fuss-free manner too. And those front and rear differential locks are easy to engage as well, aside from the fact that the front lock lever is a fair distance away from the driver. Getting the Gurkha Extreme going is a rather easy task. The steering is of course heavy and that is a good thing when it comes to off-roading, which combined with these mud tires should give you a fairly good idea of what's going on underneath. Now, although the Extreme doesn't exactly leave you second guessing from behind the wheel, I do wish there was more feedback from the steering wheel for more accurate high-speed off-roading. Part of this is also down to the spring over axle suspension setup that leaves you with a somewhat distant feel of the vehicle. The mechanical setup of this car otherwise is superb for low-speed obstacles as the engine tasked by a Bosch ECU makes the motor's 321 Nm of peak torque available from as low as 1,600 rpm all the way to 2,400 rpm. But in fact, this ECU does so much more than that, for all you have to do over an obstacle is just let go of all three pedals and the ECU will simply detect a gradient and send just enough power to all four wheels so the Gurkha can overcome an obstacle. As a result, driving this Gurkha Extreme off-road has turned out to be a very different experience from what I was expecting. Honestly, this ECU is a bit too impressive and in fact, it reminds me of the Defender's ECU as it functions in a very similar manner and praise does not get higher than that. However, I would have liked for the ECU to give the driver a bit more liberty while tackling obstacles to give them better command. But then again, the ECU will retain 1000 RPM over all surfaces when you engage low range. So it serves as a hill climb feature as well as a hill descent control system. For once again, the driver is required to stay clear of all the pedals as the vehicle goes up or down an incline. It's really very competent, this ECU. But take control and the Extreme's powertrain allows you to carry a very decent amount of momentum over all sorts of terrain 
while its long travel multi-link suspension gives you a great deal of suspension travel to conquer off-road obstacles and terrain. Something that is further aided by the vehicle's impressive 44 degree approach angle, 30 degree breakover angle and 40 degree departure angle, courtesy of the Gurkha's short overhangs. The Gurkha Extreme then comes with all the credentials to make it a hardcore off-roader. But there's no getting away from its incredibly tall height of 2,075 mm and that spring over axle setup. So it's not the most dynamically capable vehicle out there. But stick to the low range kind of off-roading and the Gurkha sure has everything it takes to make it a supremely capable off-roader. Moving onto the road though brings a different picture to life. The Extreme with its spring over axle setup has a lot of body roll. There's a lot of NVH inside the cabin for there's next to no sound deadening here, leaving aside the tire noise since it's riding on off-road tires. But then again, the steering is vague and requires constant adjustment on the road. The engine and gearbox though are totally roadworthy for the oil burner pulls cleanly from the get-go and delivers strong power across the rev range and never feels out of breath or course. The Gearbox 2 is fairly direct and easy to operate. It's only the heavy clutch that can become bothersome in stop-start traffic. So this Gurkha Extreme then, like all previous Gurkhas, seems to be built towards a very purpose-oriented nature. It's a hardcore off-road vehicle. It's not the most suited for tarmac use. Now, when it comes to the interiors of this Force Gurkha Extreme, uh, they haven't really changed much over the Explorer model. So you still get the same uh, sort of a rudimentary dashboard. Uh, you get your air vents here. Uh, it comes with air conditioning and heating as standard. So that's a plus point on its side. Uh, but uh, leaving aside those things, this is a purely utilitarian vehicle. Uh, you got an instrument cluster here. You got your rev counter here. Uh, the 4x4 lever down here for the transfer case as well is easy to operate. Uh, the differential locking, the rear ones here and the front ones there. So you got to pull them up and uh, lock the differentials for hardcore off-road use. Um, so all your operational stuff is right here. So this new Force Gurkha truly lives up to its extreme name tag. This ECU is so good. It just detects a gradient and climbs up. It'll detect a downhill gradient as well and act as a hill descent control. It's insane. It comes with a three inch uh, lift kit already and it's got the works essentially right now. So this car truly has everything it takes to be a hardcore off-road product. Uh, it's just a matter of time now for it to be proven by the Indian Army's standards uh, and then we'll see where this goes. At the same time, Force is also looking out at the private market with this car because it is extremely capable and is totally capable of catering to the off-road buyer. There's a lot of off-road clubs across the country now and this thing comes production ready. Nobody has to modify anything. Uh, the approach, departure and breakover angles are excellent. So this car really has what it takes to cater to the private buyer as well. All we need to now see is uh, how it fares in the market space.